Welcome to the Innovation Squadcast. If you are looking for a podcast about instructional strategies enhanced by technology, you came to the right place. In our conversations, we will talk with tech experts, share ideas, and strategies to help you build your toolbox with tools that you can use in your class immediately. Welcome to the Innovation Squadcast. Today, we're talking tips and tricks for creating choice boards. Choice boards are the ultimate tool for differentiating learning in the classroom. Students are given a variety of activities to choose from in order to demonstrate an understanding of a topic or unit of study. By giving students choices, teachers will typically find that students are more engaged and will produce higher quality products. In this episode, we will discuss tips and tricks you can use to create choice boards in your classroom. Joined today by Pam Hubler, I am Jimmy Cates, and um, you know we're really excited to bring and talk about choice boards. But before we get into it, let's pause for this week's quick tech tip. This week's quick tech tip is in our Chrome Web Store. It is an extension called Tab Resize. Once added to Chrome, it will show up on the upper right hand part of your Chrome. You may have to look in the puzzle piece to find your Chrome extensions. You can hit the pin bar next to them if you want them to show up all the time uh, in your extension little bookmark page right here. This particular tab resize icon looks like two arrows in a blue box. Once I click it, it'll open up a window for me. The first thing I can do is look at my settings, knowing that I can left or right align. I can create custom layouts. I can uh, undo uh, any changes that I made. I can create an empty tab when I split, or I can just select the option here for one to two and split the two tabs that I have right there uh, with one click of a button. And then I can again uh, open up that un, uh, that extension again, and then I can undo that and it would take me back to where I was. So a quick way to create dual screens, dual tabs inside of Chrome using the Chrome extension tab resize. All right, hope you enjoyed that quick tech tip. I love tab resize. I hope everyone mm -hmm. checks it out. Um, uh, it's it's a really great way to be able to split a screen, especially, you know, we're used to having multiple screens. Yes. And then when we're not in a, a situation where we can have multiple screens, at least it gives us that way to divide it up a little bit. So, you know, talking about choice boards is, you know, something that we wanted to discuss today because it can be used in any classroom, mm -hmm. any level, yeah. all across. And um, it's something that I didn't discover until later into my educational career. I wish I would have had it much sooner, sooner, but um, you know, what are some tech tools that, you know, just to get started as far as, you know, we're going to do tech tools today. We're going to talk about some different styles and then we'll talk about some steps of creating them, mm -hmm. but what kind of programs do you want to, you know, use when it comes to creating um, choice boards? I know my first go-to is Google drawings yes. just because it's a single page, very similar to Google slides, but if you don't need multiple pages, Google drawings is just an easy way. Sure. Um, to an easy place to start. Um, and then now that we're using Schoology, Google Drawings is one of those yep. nice, in, you can embed it in there and there are no outside lines or it's just, it's quick and easy. Sure. So Google Drawings is probably yep. the first place I yeah, start. I think people don't use Google Drawings a lot because they're just mm -hmm. not familiar with it. But I mean, the, the ability to link things, put yes. shapes in there, mm -hmm. um, you know, make things clickable and go different places, I think is really nice with, with Google Drawings uh, mm -hmm. that you can do. And the fact that you, how easy it is to resize everything that you want mm -hmm. to get the size that you need and then embed them is, is a great way to use those as well. And pretty much any of the Google, anything in yes. the Google in the Google suite you can use when it comes to docs. Um, I've seen uh, choice boards in slides. Um, you know, you can pretty much make them anywhere in any of those Google ways. So mm -hmm. I think that's a great um, place to go to as well. Um, and I know everybody's favorite is Canva is another yes. one to go ahead and talk about Canva I and how actually, that can help. I started combining them because I've started to get used to the visuals in Canva more. Right. Yep. So I'll go into Canva and create the visual and set that as my background. Right. Um, and then I'll go into Google Drawings or Google Slides and add links over the top sure. of it. So um, yeah, I, I do that with the, the clickable smashing. banners yes. for the Schoology, um, Schoology <laughs> clickable banners. I do that. I, I make them all in Canva first and then bring them into drawings. Yeah. Um, to be able, number one, to be able to put the links and number two because once you update that link it updates it in school automatically right. and then two to be able to upload it um that as well so what, when you created our visual wh what were the steps that you went through to create that you did the visual in canva first Correct. right yep yep and then what'd you do next so then once i um i downloaded it as a gif uh -huh. um, because i had a couple moving parts in there um and then i upload i just dragged that gif into drawings mm -hmm. um resized it and then put um uh, uh transparent shapes over the 
That's right. Yeah, okay. transparent shapes over the text um, to create the the links. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. The transparent shapes are nice because um, you don't. It's hard to think. Okay, how do I make it clickable? Right. But then you just put a shape around it, so no matter where they click on that spot, um, then it's going to go to that site. Correct. So yep. I do like. No, that. I love making those. Those are fun. I just sit mm -hmm. down. I was on Google Meet one day. I'm like, oh, I'll kill some a few yeah, minutes right? here and knock out this. <laughs> so another really great. Um, template place. And here's one thing too about choice boards. If you just Google search, uh, when I was doing research for this um, podcast, yeah. I just Google search like choice boards and you get more than you asking for. Uh -huh. um, you can get a lot of stuff. So you can just Google search for templates. They're out there. Uh, Slides Mania um, is a great place to find any kind of uh, you know presentation and or mm -hmm. choice board templates as well. Um, and we actually have a bunch of already found resources in our show notes. Yes. So if you're listening, again, show notes are uh, the, the link to the show notes are found in the description uh, in the window uh, in our YouTube channel, or you can find it in the Schoology mm -hmm. um, podcast um, page as well. So it's found in different places or reach out to your ILC and we'll send it to you. Um, but, yeah, definitely um, check out Slides Mania because if yes. you go to Slides Mania and go to education, there's a drop down of tons mm -hmm. of resources, but then there is a drop down yep. for choice board. Yep. And then you can easily just look through all the ones yep. that they have and they're already linked. So, and they're already, well, I mean, I say cute. I mean, it yeah. doesn't have to be cute. <laughs> no. <laughs> but. No, they, they, it's really, you can find out. So, there's so many resources out there. So definitely, you know, search it for yourself or again, just head to our show notes and we've got resources that we found that are vetted, that we loved, um, that you can find as well. So, you know, that's a good way, you know, talks about just looking for tech tools. You know, that's the way to go it. But then when you get outside of that, there's, you know, there's all kinds of different ways that you can attack the choice boards and find different like styles, right? Right. So like what, you know, what are your kind of go-to um, styles when it comes to making choice boards? I know, especially if I'm using Google Slides, um, and this actually kind of goes with the tech tool and with the style, but um, if I want them to stay within a Google Slide with the different choices, I might do like the first page has that almost like a tic-tac-toe style right? Um, where it has, you know, like nine squares, but then um, it's not only individual choices, but they also link to different slides. Gotcha. So that way... Um, it's easy to stay in one document sure. and them not be all over the place. Yeah. And what's nice about the tic tac toe is that they can, they have to do like three in a row, mm -hmm. diagonal, or, you know, however you want. So right. you got to think about how you organize it based off of, um, you know, how you want them to complete it, which I thought was kind of, it's kind of fun for the kids to yeah. do mix it up a little bit. Yeah. So. And that was one I know, um, Casey Bell, of course, we always mention her sure. up learning in best. all of yep. our podcasts. Um, <laughs> but she mentions how that's an easy way to be able to um, change the level of difficulty. Right. Um, and then making sure that that one, the harder ones are kind of in the middle where they have to create sure. one hard one. Right. Or, um, and so it just, you know, right. it can you can give them a little bit of choice, but still kind of guide them. Yeah. What I also liked about the tic-tac-toe is you create that free space in the middle too yes. and give give student choice. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, they don't have to choose it. They could go all top row or out row, right. but if they want to create something um, of their own, which again, all about empowerment and giving them mm -hmm. ownership, um, that free space is nice in that tic-tac-toe yeah. style as well. Yeah. So. And that's when sometimes they give us better content when sure. we have no, I've we're like, always, oh, you tell me like a I've shark tank. I've always thing. found that. Yep. Yes. I've <laughs> always found that when I give them free choice to, you know, create something because they're passionate about it, they're mm -hmm. going to create something that's super dynamic as well. I know that one time that I did dive into it, um, after taking the PL course back, you know, mm -hmm. it was the menu style. I really like the menu style. Yes. Um, of, you know, I, I created, like I had an appetizer, I had the uh, menu or the entrees and I had some dessert style and then, you know, I had to pick one of each one and, right. and go through that. And I thought the menu was really cool. And what's really cool is you can really make, I made it, you know, a little too complicated, but I had like different point levels so they could well, actually, you were high school. Too, yeah. So it's so okay. had different point totals for each one. So like the more difficult things had more points mm -hmm. or they could do, you know, a bunch of smaller activities. So there wasn't like a number, it was a point total they could work towards. Mm -hmm. um, I like that so, idea. Um, it was kind of, you know, it made it, you know, if you just want to, you know, really focus on the vocabulary, if you want to make some flashcards, you know, that's not as many mm -hmm. points as if you really tried to make something with those vocabulary terms. So it just kind of, it varied uh, based off of the difficulty level and I thought the kids really enjoyed that as well it gave them some choice and, and based off of also like 
what they had going on that week. This week I can spend some more time on some things right. versus not. So well, that would be nice, especially for I think of a lot of like my own one of my own kids is you know gifted and she's one that okay I'm gonna look at all these points. Sure. This is how much I need. Right. So this is all I have to do exactly. to get an A. Yep. Um, and then you have the yep. kids that are like this is the easiest. This is the easiest. Yep. This is the easiest. Yep. I think I have one of each, but yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's a nice way to sure. for them to even be able to pick how much they're actually exactly. gonna put into um, it. What about the bingo style? I have never thought about that one do you know anything about what's how would the bingo style work i um i guess like the tic-tac-toe and bingo almost end up the same right. i know i did one um when i was a coach um as it, i called it um it was like a coaching bingo sure. and it was basically the choice board um but it was a way for teachers to see how I could support them. I got you. Um, so I had all the different ways that I can kind of help them. Oh, they um, had to pick. That's right. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can see how it would work. So the kids pick yeah. almost in a way. Exactly. Okay. And then they pick whatever it is. Um, and bingo, I guess if you do want them to spell out bingo, because sure. then you can, it's another way, kind of like that tic-tac-toe, right. where you can kind the, of guide them to where you want them to go. Let's get five in a row. So mm -hmm. a little bigger, kind of make it a more dynamic, complex, exactly. right, based off of what you're looking for. I get it. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And I had a huge template. I mean, I'll, I'll, I can share the link to it. Um, it wouldn't work for everybody, but you sure. can get the idea right. of how, because it was a Google Slides template. Um, and so each one went to a different page in the Google slide because it popped up with right. a description um, of what that would be and yeah. then how they could request that support. Cool. So, I like that idea. Yeah. The other one I liked fun. too doing research was the multiple intelligence one. I thought that was really neat. Mm -hmm. So a lot of templates out there that had all these different, you know, learning styles. And so you would create an activity based off of that, you know, learning style, which goes back right. into personalized learning and learning about your kids and, you know, you know, and the uh, learning profiles and all that stuff. And I thought that was really cool um, to be able to create, um, you know, activities based off of learning styles. And so I really like the multiple intelligence style as well. Um, and then I was a list guy. I, I made uh -huh. lists for my kids a lot of times, like, all right, I need these things done. Just, you know, uh -huh. so it can be as simple as that. It doesn't have to be an elaborate, you know, you know, whole, you know, template and all these different, you know, fancy things. I just had a list mm -hmm. of things I needed to get done and you get to pick which ones you want to get done. So I thought that was nice as well. I like so. that because then you can add that musical and artistic and sure. kinesthetic because, yep. you know, some kids don't, they're like, oh, please don't make me actually do another project. Right. But if you can make them physically do something, sure. then they're like, yeah, I'll take that one. Yeah. Um, and, that counts. Like what? You yeah. know, so yeah. Exactly. So like I had, I had like some that. theater students in my class one time and they loved making quick little musicals or quick mm -hmm. little music video. And I'm like, go for it. You know, that's, that's what you want to do. That's what, and they would make some amazing, they did like Hamilton spoofs and try to, you know, create songs and oh, music fun. videos based off all that. And it was great. I yeah, loved it. You know, I look forward content. to it every time. My kids look, my, my other students always were like, all right, what are you guys doing this time? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it got to the point too, where like, all right, we got to do something else besides a music video for this one. So, right. You know, you got to mix it up every once in a while. So, which goes back to like creating, you know, like a column of choices, right? That's another style where, mm -hmm. you know, you have, columns um and then you've got your choices and then you can even decide how those columns are organized so you don't have to necessarily do like a tic-tac-toe or bingo but you can do like proficiency levels as well yes um you talked about a little bit about the proficiency levels that you mm -hmm. guys are working on uh, in the pl course yeah because if you have um different options let, let's say you pick a standard um and you want them to have different options as far as okay if they're at the emerging level right then try these things um if you're at the developing level try these and then into demonstrating and then applying applying would be that like that final sure. step yep. so you have um, a lot of different ways you can get them to engage in the content um, but produce something that will help them learn sure and yeah, i think it kind of goes along with the 5e lesson plan mm -hmm. and the 3 lesson plan that we we're talking about the the e's are engage explore explain elaborate and evaluate mm -hmm. um and uh and so and then like the three e's are explore explain and engage right, right? it yep. just makes it a little bit like you can make them more complex if you want to use all five and then you can make it a little simpler sure. um to do the explore explain engage exactly. and you can start getting into some hyperdocs, which is yep. a little bit different. Um, we can also share some resources for that as well. Um, but once you get into choice boards, yes. it, it's kind of a natural progression yeah. is to go into hyperdocs. So yeah. maybe that'll be a, a part two. <laughs> yeah. Um, and definitely check out our show notes again. We have all these styles. We have the tech tools listed. We've got the resources in there as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so don't feel like you have to be writing everything down, but definitely, you <laughs> right. know, as you're, as you're listening and driving, but, um, definitely check out, 
um, the show notes and we have all these things in here, reach out to one of us and we'll be happy because choice boards can be one of those things where you're looking at it and it looks overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the best thing is the advice to give to teachers is to make it your own, right? Don't, yeah. don't overcomplicate it. Keep it simple, make it. And then as time goes, you'll be able to kind of develop it, I think, a little bit more as you're going as well. So um, we want to kind of end it with just, you know, quickly go through what steps, like mm -hmm. this goes step by step. Like if I'm going to create this, you know, so it's not so overwhelming, you know, what, what would you start? Mm -hmm. What would be the first thing you'd want to do to do that step, you know? Well, usually, I mean, choosing the topic in general, especially sure. if you have a topic that's a fairly big topic um, and you want to kind of narrow it down to yep. which ways they learn um, and then how long you want them to be able to actually take to do it. Sure. So whether yeah, it's like it could be a, two weeks yeah, or it could be one maybe, day or yeah. yeah, it could be one day choice board mm -hmm. or it could be a whole unit choice board. So that's something to think about that's, as you're building it. Definitely mm -hmm. think about the time frame as well. And I think the next thing you'd want to determine, you know, kind of once you have that time frame and that topic is what do you want to see? Like what would be... Mm -hmm. Um, what would be mastery? What would be, you know, what would students be able to create? What would they want to be able to know? What would I want to mm -hmm. see? Do they right. understand it? I always, I always thought that was the best start with the end in mind. What do I want oh, the kids to know? And what do I want to be able to see to make sure that they understand this particular topic? Yeah, it's so, that backwards design where even yeah. if you do start with the overall assessment, okay, this is what I have to have. Sure. Um, to show that they know it and but then how can we actually get them to learn the content kind exactly. of on their own with some choice sure and then once you have that i think deciding on a style would be mm -hmm. step number three so yeah step one choose your topic step two determine your assessment step three decide on the style right mm -hmm. we've talked about all the different styles it can be your own style but definitely you know number three is pick that style mm -hmm. um and i think number four is an important one that probably people would skip and that's to brainstorm and really map it out you know right. don't, you know you can either start creating it digitally or even you know write it out on a poster or a piece of paper to think it through before maybe you start right. creating it digitally and it doesn't have to be created digitally you could make a poster and put it up but right i mean making a digital one would make sense probably yeah. save you a little bit of time and a lot of um, people already do like the must do may do yep. um like on their board sure so it's the same idea it's just you're you're putting it on a choice board exactly itself. Yep. um so that's that is helpful yep so step four is you're brainstorming out thinking about your activities your must do may do um and then once that's done step five is to create it mm -hmm. using again one of the tech tools that we talked about um in the style that we talked about about. So yeah, um, and you don't have to. I mean, that's one you can make it super simple. Sure. When you start searching them, like you said, just yep. do a Google search. Um, you'll see what type of style you you kind of veer towards anyway. Exactly. Um, of course, I always take a little bit more time to create mine, but that's just because I'm extra when it comes to that. <laughs> so we're the opposites when it comes to creating those things. Yes. Um, and that's good. That's okay. It can be yep, exactly however exactly. you want. So yep. um, you know, I, I definitely again would encourage people to check out the the, the show notes. Um, mm -hmm. This probably has the best resources that we've probably provided on the show notes that I've seen to this point. I mean, there's so many great options um, out there. The Tech Tidbits um, website, this mm -hmm. is, um, was it Jenna Conan? Is that what her name I was? I think so. Yeah, she created is fantastic. Um, obviously, Shake Up Learning and mm -hmm. Casey Bell and her um, and resources are all, again, found right here inside the show notes. And also inside the show notes, you can find a video to the Tech Tip and also find the link to the Squadcast PD so yes. that if you're listening, uh, every two episodes you listen to, there's a Google form, fill out, tell us what you thought, um, and then turn it in and you get uh, an hour of credit. So mm -hmm. that's a great, great way to get some hours as you go through, um, uh, going through. So, yeah. And if you have ideas, let us know. Definitely. If there's something yes. you want to learn about, sure. just let us know. <laughs> yeah, definitely reach out to us or reach out to your ILCs. If you got some other choice board ideas out there and or um, if you've used any of these and, uh, and want us to help support. So, yeah, yeah. And tag us on social media too. Yes. So if you do anything based on the um, the podcast, let us know. We want to. We want absolutely. Know. And if you ever want to be on, yes. reach out to us. We oh would love gosh, to have yes. um, other people uh, join us on the podcast. Yeah. We as get well, sick so. of our own voices. <laughs> 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 Not me. I love my voice. No, <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Um, so thanks everybody for listening. Check out the show notes, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.